there! Welcome back and thanks for joining me. All my supplies and equipment are listed down below in the description box and they have links so check that out. And if you'd like this video hit that subscribe button. If you want to be notified when new videos come out hit that notification bell. Give me a thumbs up and comments and questions are welcomed. So here I've got a cup and I've layered it with white, Payne's gray, and a shimmery gold. So as I'm turning though, I'm wanting to, uh, as I'm pouring, sorry, I'm wanting to turn so the pattern will uh, start to form a little bit of a circle in itself also. So let's just pour this and see what we've got. So at this point, I start to get a really good clue. I don't have enough paint. So I have, uh, I'm getting some more mixed up. And I was outside that day. It was a gorgeous day, but somebody in the neighborhood started cutting down trees. So there's a chainsaw going off. So I had to do the voiceover. And if y'all haven't worked with Payne's Gray, it is incredible. It's such a beautiful color. And you can see how moving around you're going to get different patterns from the pouring. I love the ring pours. They're just so beautiful uh, when they get stretched out. You never know what you're going to get, but they are incredible. Now, I didn't put what I call my scoot paint, um, so it is definitely rolling under. And then I'm definitely going to lose some pattern there. So... Um, I always put some extra, I don't always, obviously, but I, it's a good idea to put that extra paint around because when you do have this extra paint, the pattern that you've just poured will scoot versus rolling under and you just lose it. It just it goes away and you just miss that opportunity to have some of that pattern, um, in your final painting. So Definitely, and you can see there how the, the it goes a little faster, but it also keeps the pattern, and it's just, it makes it so much easier. I take a lot of my paint that I've dripped off, and it, of course, turns brown because it's got all kinds of colors in it, and I keep that paint for this, so I'm not using my good paints. See how cool that is. And you can tell with it going slow, it was a good thing that I mixed up that extra. I wouldn't have had enough. And once I've gotten it to all the sides, that's when I kind of start trying to figure out what I'm wanting in the picture, what I'm wanting toward the center. So you can scoot this, or not scoot it, you can tilt it and move what you really like back to the center. And this gold shows up so pretty. And after I epoxied this, it was absolutely incredible. And 
Now, something you definitely want to do. Now, I've got this on cups. I really like uh, the jumbo push pins. So much easier because you don't have to hunt your cups and rearrange your cups and everything, which I am now trying to do that because I just used the cups when I went outside. You definitely, though, be careful. You want to rake up under the canvas all the way around because if that is dripping and it's going to start pulling the other paint, it kind of wicks it right off the top. So you want to go around and make sure up underneath you've gotten all your drips. And then for a few minutes after you've finished, just keep checking that because you don't want that to start pulling your paint off. Well, I hope this gave you some good ideas on choosing colors and y'all go have fun.